Today's video is about the Aussie King Brown Snake. Today I'm going to give you five facts about the King Brown Snake and five art tips to help you improve your art. Art tip number one, always draw from real life wherever you can. I'm not encouraging people to go out and play with venomous snakes, not unless you're already a snake handler. But to go out and experience the animal, even if you go to the zoo, which is probably the best place to go, or a, a reptile keeper who has them in, a, in an aquarium or something like that, sit there and sketch it. You'll find they sit under the heat lamp and they just chill out, relax, and they're still and they're easy to draw. Whereas what I do, they tend to move around a bit. Wildlife fact number one about the king brown snake. One of the largest venom snakes in the world. It would average about two meters in length. One individual from near Darwin was measured at 3.3 meters in total length. That's a big snake. However, there are records of coastal taipans getting even longer. It may not be the largest venomous snake in the world, but it is one of the largest venomous snakes in the world. Art tip number two, breaking down the head scales of this, turning it into geometric shapes, you have to use perspective especially the scales above the eyes. I move a few lines through for perspective. The scales in front of that, the scales behind that, those lines converge back. Use perspective to make the head look right. Even exaggerate the perspective a bit. It always looks better if you do that. So it seems funny to put perspective into an organic shape, but think of those panels as geometrical shapes and it seems to make a lot of sense. Sometimes, whether it's the human body or an animal, you've got to break these things down into shapes and then make sure you put the perspective on it. And it works so much better. Wildlife fact number two about the king brown snake. It's not a true brown snake. Despite its common name, the king brown snake or the mulga snake is not a true brown snake. It is much closer to, say, a red-bellied black than it is to a western brown or an eastern brown. The bite from the king brown snake is treated by the same anti venine you use to treat a black snake. So it's really a great big large black snake. Alright, tip number three. Okay, use a brick pattern for scale guide. Most people can draw bricks. If you're an artist, I'm sure you know how to draw bricks. Uh, the trick is to make them curve around the body a bit. It took me ages and lots of screwed up pieces of paper and frustration to discover this. But after a lot of hard work, it felt like I cracked the code. You lay down brickwork, you replace each of those bricks with a scale, and you got something that looks like a snake. Handy hint to know if you're drawing snakes, dragons, fish, anything that's scaly. Wildlife fact about the king brown snake number three. The king brown snake has specialized in eating other reptiles like lizards and snakes, but this also includes other king brown snakes. They will occasionally eat birds, mammals and frogs, but they'd much rather eat their reptiles. Dot dot dash 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 dot dot it's like Morse code. Art tip number four. Ink like a master. It's not good to copy another artist's work. However, it is good to learn from another artist. It is said that bad artists copy, but great artists steal. The way you get away with stealing here is not to steal from one person. If you were to copy your favorite artist all the time, your artwork becomes derivative of that artist. If you steal from multiple sources, then you are coming up with a mixture that is unique. So I would encourage you to look at the artists you like, whether it's Rembrandt or Jack Kirby or, or even Frank Miller, anywhere in between. It doesn't really matter. If you like the artwork, copy it once or twice, find out what you like about it, take what you like about it, and then mix it with another artist that you like. You're already starting to find something unique. After a while, you stop copying, you do your own thing. Inking is like your signature. All the little dots, the dashes, the cross hatching, that's your signature. That's what makes you unique. That's where you start finding your style. A lot of the great masters used to say you have to copy from the masters to learn. Practicing every day does help, but to advance, you've got to add something new. 
no good just copying the same mistakes every day you never learn so learn from the masters so my own inking style is probably a mix of a whole stack of artists i like wildlife fact about the king brown snake number four largest recorded venom output of any snake species it's a dangerous snake. It has been known to kill people in the past. The venom is more hematoxic than neurotoxic. Most of our most dangerous snakes, like tiger snakes, taipans, eastern browns, they have a neurotoxic venom that works fast, paralyzes you, and kills you. Whereas the bulk of the venom of this snake has more hematoxic properties, which breaks down the blood cells, causes damages to muscles, this goes through your system, it can cause kidney damage and then even renal failure. Now back to the amount of venom. Tiger snake, although it has much more potent venom, the average bite is somewhere between 10 and 40 milligrams of venom, while the king brown snake may inject up to 150 milligrams of venom in a single bite. That is a lot of venom for a large snake. Art tip number five. I'm using these watercolor markers from Winsor & Newton. This is not an advertisement for Winsor & Newton marker pens. I just like using their products. These can be fairly cool if you use the right paper. That can be a big disappointment if you're using the wrong paper. If you use any sort of watercolor paper, you'll find that it probably absorbs in. You add water, nothing happens. If you use one that's well sized or compressed or what Winsor & Newton would recommend, it works fine. I find it works fine on illustration board whereas normal watercolor would not. Once you lay that ink down, I use my aqua brush just to wet in that and it dissolves and it comes a little bit like watercolor. And once I have that down, I can tint it with actual watercolor, which is very helpful. Here's a little bonus fact if you like. Not all king brown snakes, but quite a lot of them have this very interesting color in that each of their scales has a light and a dark bit on each scale, which gives this really interesting subtle pattern. Usually the outer tip of the scale is dark and then closer to the body is light. It does give a very interesting effect. And quite often you'll see this on the mulga snakes or the king brown snakes. Okay, a final fact, and this is a weird one. Wildlife fact number five about the king brown snake is that it has been known to attack people who are asleep. Now snakes usually only attack people if they're being hurt, if they feel threatened, if they're being stepped on. You really have to provoke snakes to get them to bite you, despite of what people say. However, in a new study that examined 27 cases of people being bitten by the mulga snake or the king brown snake, researchers have found that seven of these victims were asleep when they were bitten. Also, from what I could read, it doesn't really give the details of how this happened. Do the snake sneak in a sleeping bag and then you go in a confined space and it feels threatened? I can't imagine a snake just attacking somebody for no reason whatsoever. It just doesn't normally happen. So there must be some circumstance as to why they get bitten. Whether the snake just sort of moves into somewhere warm, then somehow feels threatened. Because if a snake's in an enclosed space, it will feel threatened, it will probably bite. So if it sneaks into a sleeping bag or something like that, yeah, it's a good chance you could get bit. Maybe they just have to shake out their sleeping bag before they go to bed. Now, having said this about the venom of the snake and this really weird fact about them biting people who are asleep, it's probably good to take note that in recent history, the last case of a fatal bite from a king brown snake was reported more than 40 years ago. Snakes just want to be left alone to do their thing, which is to cruise around and eat, in this case, other snakes, but normally snakes are looking to eat your rats or your mice. They don't really have much of an interest in us humans at all. We just create the right environment for them because we create places where they can sun themselves and where they can find rats and mice. And of course, a piece of art is not finished until it's put up on Redbubble. Probably should be, you know, bonus tip number six. Always put your art out there somewhere. Link in the description below. So subscribe and hit the bell button if you've already subscribed. Hit that bell button so you get notified when these videos come out. And I'll catch you in the next video.
Bye.